How's everyone doing? Today I'll be reviewing the horror movie Butcher Boys. And this is written by Kim Henkel, who wrote the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And he apparently wrote this film to be a sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but decided to make it a separate film altogether. And this is also inspired by Jonathan Swift's 1700s uh, cannibalistic tale, A Modest Proposal. And this is directed by Dwayne Graves and Justin Meeks, who also directed The Wild Man Navidad. And Dwayne Graves and Justin Meeks were actually former film students of Kim Henkel, so that's how they got involved with each other. Now, immediately after watching this film, I thought this is Judgment Night meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre. If you've ever seen the movie Judgment Night, which is a very underrated movie, it has the same setup and premise, except it gets to a cannibal level, which brings out the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, element to it. And there's actually a character in here that kind of reminds you a little bit of uh, Leatherface. And it actually has a lot of cameos from Texas Chainsaw Massacre alum, such as Marilyn Burns, Edwin Neal, and John Dugan. So it's pretty cool to see all of them in here. And, you know, it's kind of a, an homage to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre with a lot of the different ideas going on here. It has a gritty feel to it as well. And it starts out with a bunch of young kids being chased into an inner city urban area that seems to be abandoned, lots of abandoned buildings. And right off the bat, they're getting chased in there by another car. And the other car ends up hitting a dog. And there's these people outside, and they decide to chase down both cars. And they find out that the people aren't just upset about the dog, that they're actual cannibals. They're a group of people that kill people and, and, you know, hunt them down and eat them. And so they're trying to drive and escape out of there except they get their car hit and they have to run out on foot and try to escape and not be killed and, you know, one by one they're being tracked down and hunted. And first of all, the group of, of cannibal guys, they look like greasers. They look like 50s greasers, you know. I was just thinking, like, like these guys aren't the typical cannibal looking guys, you know. They're, they look like they're about to go do a drag race instead of, you know, cutting people up. So that was kind of weird right there to begin with. Uh, but, you know, it's basically the, the kids trying to run away and hide in the abandoned buildings. And there's some tension suspense as, you know, somebody's hiding in a locker and somebody's walking by and hitting the, the locker next to them. And, and somebody else is hiding in a room and the greasers can't get in there because it's locked and lots of different things like that. Lots of suspense. But there's some good gore as well. People, you know, getting their necks ripped out and bitten and, you know, just chunks of flesh coming out, lots of blood squirting everywhere, and they refer to a certain girl as junk. And I'm thinking, like, what does that mean, junk? And then later, by the end of the movie, you find out what that means, and it has a special meaning to it. And so you go from the inner city area with abandoned buildings and things like that to kind of an inner layer where they have these people that essentially, you know, kill the people and, you know, cut them up and things like that, and they find out your worth. And it's essentially a tale of two movies. You have the first part, which is kind of like a chase, and the second part is where you, you're in the layer and you're finding out what's going to happen. And that's where you're introduced to a character uh, they call Amphead, which is a lot like uh, Leatherface. He's, you know, chained up and he's, you know, he's got kind of that dirty look, long hair, and he's, you know, grunting and things like that. And you're introduced to a bunch of different cast and characters. Uh, you know, you have the one doctor right there and you find out what his purpose is and he's real crazy and loony, which is very fitting. And some of the acting is over the top, but it works for that particular role especially. And it's really great to see some of these people from uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre doing this movie as well. It's one of the bright parts of this movie is some of the cameos. And a couple other actors here do decently as well. Uh, the actress who plays Sissy, Allie Faulkner, she did a good job. And uh, the lead, Greaser, did a very good job as well. Uh, but the rest is kind of like hit or miss. And Butcher Boys seems to lack direction. It seems kind of clustered and scatterbrained, especially towards the end of the movie. It didn't seem to know what it wanted to do. There's parts in here where I'm just thinking, like, what are you doing here? Just do something more with it. And there's a lot of outlandish characters. There's this older guy who he's all greased up and traveling through the walls to try to save his daughter. That whole character was just so ridiculous. And there's a bunch of characters like that that just seem to be thrown in there just for the heck of it that should have been edited out. There's a lot that could have been edited here. And some of the interaction with other characters, you're just thinking, really? And then there's the one character who's really kind of proper, this one guy. He's got a creepy long finger now. And you're thinking, he seems so out of place with the rest of them. A lot of these people just seem like they would never interact with each other ever. You have the greasers that are trying to be tough, and then you have this one guy who's kind of like proper, and then you have another guy, and he's just seemed out of place as well, kind of like an older guy who's a businessman kind. And then you find out there's a whole bunch of other businessmen, and then there's girls running around and trying to escape, and other girls who don't want to escape, and it's just a complete mess. It's so scatterbrained, it's ridiculous, all the different characters, all the different actions that happen, and then by the end of the movie you're thinking, this can't possibly get any more ridiculous or scatterbrained, can it? And it does! And you have the character of Sissy who's trying to escape and 
yeah, there's just so much going on there. I'm just thinking, wow, I can't believe I sat through this movie. And, you know, I requested this as a review uh, title, so that's why I'm doing this. Otherwise, if I didn't request this and I just saw it on TV or wherever, I would have walked out because it was just a complete mess. The biggest issue here is the lack of direction. It just seemed like it had one idea and it completely went three different ways. It was just a whole bunch of different ideas thrown together that didn't work well here. And Butcher Boys... I was really looking forward to it. I saw the trailer. I was really excited for it. And it seemed like there was going to be a lot of gore and action. And there was some good gore and there was some good action in the beginning, some tension suspense, but then it just completely fell off. And even the aspect with the cannibals, they didn't really play that up enough. And then with the businessmen, they didn't really kind of develop that as much. You know that they're these people are being killed and probably served to the businessmen, but they didn't really go into depth about that. And then some of the dialogue was just oh, absurd and cliched and Ugh, even the characters as well. Some of the characters look completely miscast. You know, you have the greasers, then you have the old creepy dudes, and then you have the businessmen, then you have the other weird dudes, and, and then you have the kind of the cannibal prim and proper guy. All these characters just don't seem to mix well either. You know, there's a couple people being bitten and eaten and things like that, but it wasn't as much as you would expect from a cannibal movie like this, especially one that's kind of trying to pay homage to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, the same writer and things like that, some of the same actors. I wanted a little bit more from that cannibal aspect, a little bit more from the grittiness of it. It would have been cooler to see more of Amp Head, who's kind of the Leatherface character, to see him do more things instead of being chained up the whole movie and then kind of let go towards the end of the movie, like, you know, King Kong essentially breaking out into the streets and things like that. And there's another scene, too, that seemed completely out of place. The greasers stop and pick up this old lady's dog and, you know, take the dog and the dog bites one of the characters so they, like, throw it out the window. I'm like, that whole scene was just stupid. It just felt really out of place and there was a lot of moments like that in this movie that I felt could have hit the editing floor and made the flow of this movie a lot better. There isn't enough here of any kind of elements to make it something that I would recommend. And I understand that it's low budget, but that doesn't give this movie a pass. It had the potential to be much better than it was, and it's basically due to this, the scatterbrained direction here. It could have been so much better, and it's just a disappointment. They have a couple good ideas here, and it just seemed to go all opposite directions. None of the things worked well together, and it's just a big missed opportunity. You do have a bunch of different cameos from Texas Chainsaw Massacre alum, which is pretty cool to see, and some of the good acting, and a little bit of gore, it's suspense, but it's, it's not enough. It's just so much mess surrounding all of that. This had a lot of good possibilities. I like the idea of the abandoned uh, location, which looked like Detroit, but I guess it was set in Texas. That was the idea of it. And, you know, especially the abandoned buildings that are really grimy and gritty. And then you have the character that was kind of like Leatherface. I felt that was kind of a cliche. And just a lot of the cliches that were played out here with the cannibals and things like that. And it was just too ridiculous overall. And it just didn't work on any level. Butcher Boys lacks heart and direction, and I really couldn't wait for the movie to be over. Overall, I give Butcher Boys a generous 3 out of 10 stars, and I couldn't recommend watching this movie on any level, even for gore hounds. There's really not enough gore to suffice watching it for that reason. And if you thought Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D was bad, Butcher Boys makes Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D look like Citizen Kane. And if you've seen Butcher Boys, definitely let me know what you think of it as well. Leave me a comment or video response down below. Hope everyone's doing well. Take care.